But first, musician, friend to Mozart, music teacher to Marie Antoinette, and skilled fencer. Those are just a few of the accolades that describe the man known to be the first black composer of the 18th century. Arts correspondent Angel Ido introduces us to the Chevalier. After all, you are an immigrant just like me. Meet Joseph Bolognay, Chevalier de St. George. Well, not the real him, of course. Who are they? I could hear you asking him. Well, the king has created a new force, la police de noir. He's said to be the first black French composer of the 18th century. His life and legacy are now being highlighted in a new production titled The Chevalier. We fight for slavery's abolishment, Mozart. It's all about this intriguing, incredible man who John Adams described as the most accomplished man in Europe, uh, a fencer, a composer, a violinist, uh, a crusader for uh, abolishing slavery, um, a real Renaissance man. And uh, this friendship with Mozart, really Bill, um, centered this whole play around that particular fortunate coming together of these two great figures in Paris in, in 1778. Le coup de grace. It's written and directed by Bill Barclay of Concert Theatre Works, who is also an actor in the show. We're trying to provide a deeper survey of his music. There are 16 different movements of his music represented in the show. And there's also his life, his psychology, his sense of humor, his relationship to fencing, how he was knighted, his relationship to all these other characters who are much more famous than he, to try to lift up this man's biography in our understanding, replace him where he belongs in our music history, and honor him. No single person can be him. That's why we have two performers playing him in this show. We have an actor and we have a violinist. There isn't anyone on planet Earth who could be the Chevalier of Saint Georges. On the musical side stands Brendan Elliott. What does it mean to embody such a prominent classical composer? Playing this role feels a little um, unreal because it makes me realize how, how hard he really worked to you know, carve out this entire life for himself. Elliot is accompanied by the music of the Baroque Orchestra, conducted by Dame Jane Glover. This partnership aims to contextualize the Chevalier's music with both his life story and compositions. And there weren't many like him. I mean, he really was a sort of one-off um, who survived spectacularly uh, against so many odds. When he and Mozart came together, they were both outsiders. And in a way, it was Boulogne who had more stacked up against him, who survived better. Boulogne is coming out of the gallant style of early classical Parisian music. It sort of ends with Boulogne, as Boulogne stopped composing and started fighting in the revolution. He actually ended it himself by deciding that there was something more important to do, abolish slavery. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> On the acting side stands R.J. Foster. Now, despite just recently learning about the multifaceted artist, he says there are still many parallels between the 18th century production and today. You have a black man who has a title, he has some influence, but also he deals with racism. And it's in a different sort of way than which we deal with here, but it's also mirrors it in the same sort of way. Culture is a social lubricant. It kind of helps to tell stories that are relatable to people. We fight for slavery's abolishment, Wolfgang. That is why my address must stay strictly private, understood? For Chicago Tonight, I'm Angel Ida. And you can see this production of The Chevalier through Sunday. Visit our website for more information.